Hi everyone, in this video we are going to talk about the different ways we can add values to a C-sharp array. We'll show the manual way of populating arrays and using already populated collections which is often a situation in our day-to-day -day projects. Finally, we'll show the performance results to see what is the fastest way to do this. I assume you already know your share about arrays, so let's get right into the ways to populate one. So, in our created project, let's open this class where we will add and show different methods to populate the array. We will also use those methods for the benchmarking. The first option we have is to use the indexer initializer. Using this approach, we can set the value using the specified index or position of an array. This is a regular approach and one we are all probably familiar with. So, Let's start with the first static method. It returns the int array. Let's name it array index initializer. And let's provide a single parameter for the array size. Now, inside the method, let's create a new array by using the standard syntax for defining arrays in C -sharp with a specified size. To populate this new array, we use the for loop, starting the index from 0, let's define the upper limit and the iterator. So, to populate our array, we simply provide the index position and the value, in this case, the value of the index variable. Finally, let's return a populated array. So, as I said, this is a standard way we populate our arrays when we know the size of it. Now, with this one done, let's see another method in action, the one that isn't used that much. This next approach uses the setValue method, which is available in the array class. To see it in action, let's copy the previous method and paste it here. Then, we need to change the name to setValue method and let's modify the assignment line. Here, we can use the setValue method directly from the array variable and for the value provide the index variable and for the index we'll use the index variable again. It is important to note that we need to provide the value as the first argument and the index as the second one. Also to mention that this method will throw an index out of range exception for an incorrect array index as the previous method will do. Now, as you can see, for these two ways, we have to manually populate the arrays using the loops. But so often, we already have a collection populated with values, but we need those as arrays for our business logic. Even though we can manually use the loop to populate new arrays from those collections, there are better ways. Let's see how we can do that starting with the copy to method. Using this method, we can copy all the elements from one array to another array, starting at the specified target array index. To demonstrate this, let's create a new static method with the same return type, name it array copy to, and provide two parameters, the size of the array and another integer array. Inside the method, we need a new array with the size of the accepted parameter. Then, to populate this new array, we can use the already populated one, call the copy2 method, and provide the empty array first, and then the starting index of the target array. This method overrides the elements on the target array. Another important factor is that the target array should have enough size to hold the copied elements. There is also another method, array.copy, that is similar to this one, copy2. The difference is that it copies a range of elements from the source to the target. Finally, let's return our new populated array. Ok, we can see how easy it is to use the copy2 method with the same collection type. But now, with another approach, 
we can use a different populated collection type, for example the generic list T. We can simply use the toArray method to populate a new array. So, to show that, let's add a new static method with the same return type, name it using list and provide a list int parameter. All we have to do is to return the list converted to an array using the toArray method. Of course, we can do some checks here whether the list is empty or something like that, but for this example we know the list will be populated. The important note here is that this method works well for scenarios we don't know the size of the array upfront. Again, we can get the count of the collection and create the same sized array, but as you can see we don't have to do that. Finally, we have the link you concat method with the help again of the toArray method. To see that method in action, let's add one more method here, call it link you concat and provide a single integer array parameter. So, let's create another array variable and allocate an empty array instance using the array.empty method of type int. Then, we can populate the new array by calling the concat method and passing the accepted parameter array as an argument and of course converting this to array. Lastly, let's simply return a populated array. Now, to test that all the methods work, let's open the program class and as you can see, we already have everything prepared here. For each method, we will write the name of that method and then execute it and of course print the values from the returned array. So, let's run the app and we can see everything is working as expected. That done, we are ready for the performance test. Of course, we already prepared that as well and we will use the collections containing of 10,000 elements. Also, since for the first two approaches we have to populate the array manually using loops, but for other approaches that use already populated collections we don't have to do that, we group our benchmark results into two categories. So, let's change this to release, change the project to benchmark and run it. And we can see the result. From it, we can see that the array index initializer approach is faster than the set value method. The populated collection group is faster though, with pretty similar results. At this point, it would be pretty interesting to hear what ways you are using to populate arrays in your projects and whether you used any of these non loop methods to do the same. You can always drop a comment in the comment section below. Great! With this, we can finish the video. Please don't forget to subscribe and also hit that like button if you like the video. If you want to get notifications from our channel about future videos, you can also use the bell button. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.